Oftentimes, when searching through the web about characters in the franchise or even just any information about warriors, you'll be met with a sea of information. Of course, with this large of a fandom, it's to be expected. With this much information floating around, it's hard to decipher what's true and what's not. With seemingly credible websites being few and far between, there rises a problem of what to believe. It's especially as hard when there's multiple authors working together to create a story. As many fans already know, Aaron Hunter is just a pen name used as an umbrella for many different authors. Looking back, Sheriff Baldry as well as Kate Carey were the two main authors with Victoria Holmes being the main editor for the series. There are many others who contribute to the creation of these books, but are not officially an Aaron. For example, people like Clarissa Hutton or Dan Jolly, who both wrote spin-offs like novellas or the manga series. Though contributing a great deal to the franchise, they're not officially writers under the name. With this many people working together to create a story, the question remains as if their thoughts and statements should be taken as canon, or if their statements hold any validity at all. This question became a glaring problem at the start of 2016, when a mysterious contributor emerged out of nowhere under a name that strikes fear in many Warriors veterans. Sue Suzanne. The story starts August 10, 2016, the Facebook post. Vicki Holmes, the previously mentioned editor for the Warrior series, posted on her Facebook page correcting some information on cats within the books. In the same post, she mentioned Sue Suzanne, noting her contribution to the Facebook page, which was by responding to any queries that people may have. At the end of the Facebook post, Vicky states, Of course I will continue to answer your questions, or Susie will on my behalf. This was the first time Vicky had commented publicly about Susie and her contributions. At the time, nobody paid too much attention to this statement. However, this one statement would rock the community forever. It would be a whole month before Sue Suzanne posted Missing Kits, later to be called Missing Kits 1, the first of the first season. And yes, Susie herself categorized these as seasons. Each post explains the premise of Missing Kits, a series of posts which goes in-depth on some kits who didn't appear in stories or we only got a glimpse of, and gives them a name and backstory. Allegedly, Vicky read through these characters and approved of them, giving Susie permission to share in posts, and, as Susie states, has agreed to them as canon. The first post is nothing special really, with it giving Goldenflower another kit besides Swift Kit named Lynx Kit that passes away before he became an apprentice, and correcting what kits were mentioned at certain points in Into the Wild. Originally, this could have just been brushed off as a fan theory, but with Vicky's prior statement and the fact that Vicky herself commented on these posts, suggested that they did have her sign off and were canon. The posts continued, with there being two seasons with at least 18 entries each. And as time went on, the post started to get a little... wild. What started out as giving names to kits and possibly some explanations for deaths became long-winded family trees, pairings, backstories, and eventual damnation of some cats. For example, we have Marsh Kit, who snuck out of camp and got strangled by a fox trap, or Stone Kit, later known as Stone Stream, who jumped into a river to save his drowning sister but got tangled with a fishing net. He survived, but his right front leg was damaged so badly he retired to the Elder's Den and eventually died of infection. Along with the missing kits, Susie also responded to many questions on the Facebook page about the residence of some cats, mostly pertaining to where they went after their death. Cats like Lily Whisker were sent to the Dark Forest as a result of the anger she held for an injury that made her retire early. Other cats like Blizzardwing and Marshcloud were also listed to be members of the Dark Forest, with no reasoning given. Now, creating names for kits who died on very early is pretty harmless in my opinion, as it really doesn't affect the story that much. However, many people have had different opinions as to how harmful these theories are and their validity. Missing Kits is what put Sue Suzanne in the spotlight, as these posts caused a lot of buzz and were widely popular. Many of these posts were controversial, with there being a large group of people enjoying these backstories and creation of these cats, but also a large people who didn't approve of them. One major reason that many people didn't agree with these missing kits is the fact that it came from Susie, and not directly from Vicky herself. Though Vicky had supposedly given her sign off on the project in the one Facebook post, it was very unusual for a third party to be creating these cats and having them being passed off as canon. Many fans had trouble accepting these cats, as well, cats, and refused to acknowledge them. This idea was reinforced when one of the main admins for the Warrior Cats Wikia refused to add the cats to the wiki, 
as they thought Susie was just a normal fan. And as a quick side note, yes, the Viki is very controversial itself, but is still one of the largest and most well-known sources for Warrior Cats content, with almost all fans going to the site for information. So when something is posted on a cat's page, it's more likely to be seen by a wider audience and more likely to be canon. The admin kept their ruling until Vicky herself reached out to the admin and confirmed that Susie and her posts were legit. The wiki was slowly updated and the information revealed in these Facebook posts were now officially added. This included the names of the missing kits, dark forest cats, and any other deaths or injuries that Susie wrote about. In the same message Vicky sent to the admin of the wikia, she had also confirmed an interesting tidbit about Susie. Not only was Susie helping with the missing kits, she was also one of Vicky's consultants and helped write Pine Star's Choice. Once again, this single statement from Vicky confused fans even more. People now assume Susie was a writer, with her name even being listed in the dedication for Pine Star's Choice. Susie confirmed that she helped write this book as well as assisted Vicky in writing other novellas. However, the full extent to what she did is still unknown to this day. Susie's reign on Vicky's Facebook page continued, with her continuing to answer questions and give more information about some topics regarding warriors. However, her days were numbered after the release of a very controversial book. As stated earlier, Susie assisted Vicky in writing Pine Star's Choice. So when another novella came out in the same book as Pine Star's Choice, it didn't take long for people to start pointing fingers at Susie. Rumors started to circulate that Susie was one of the writers for this book, or that she was the one who suggested the relationship between Spotted Paw and Thistleclaw to Vicky. These rumors were later proven to be false by Susie herself through a private Facebook message. However, Susie had already received a large amount of hate from angry fans. Vicky too had received a lot of hate for this book, and in the midst of it releases an alarming statement, announcing her retirement from the series. In the same Facebook post, she had also stated that all of Sue Suzanne's work was in fact not canon and had just been suggestions. Vicky continues saying that Susie had just been sharing all of her original characters and that all her posts were there just to prompt discussion. After months of Susie working hard to create these posts and continue to build on the world of warriors, as well as multiple confirmations from Vicky herself on Susie's work of being canon, she flips the script and says none of it was meant to be taken seriously. Susie's Facebook and Wiki accounts were shut down, and she hasn't appeared back online since. Regardless of her status, Sue Suzanne will always be remembered for her work within the Warrior Cats fandom. A lot of her work has since been retconned in the books, such as Blizzardwing, a cat who I had previously mentioned was sent to the Dark Forest by Susie, appearing in Starkland in Blackfoot's Reckoning. Though not all of her work was in vain. Many of the cats in Sue Suzanne's posts were later added to the Warriors family tree, such as Cloudtail and Swiftpaw's siblings. Other cats created by Susie also appear in the family tree beside their littermates, which just leaves us with more unanswered questions. We may never know the full extent to the relationship between Vicky and Susie and what led to the infamous Missing Kits posts, nor will we ever know about their eventual fallout. One thing is certain though, and that's that Sue Suzanne will forever be a part of Warrior Cats history.